This is Changing Channels with Larry Walsh, the Channelnomics podcast that connects you with channel chiefs, thought leaders, and executives about what it takes to get the next generation of tech to market. Here's your host, Larry Walsh, the CEO and Chief Analyst of Channelnomics. Hey everyone, welcome to Changing Channels. I'm Larry Walsh. We talk a lot about the phenomenon of ecosystems. Now, you've heard me talk about this before. I've said it very clearly. I believe in ecosystems because that they've always been a part of this business we call the channel. And this is not a new phenomenon. We've been dealing with ecosystems for decades, going back to the 70s when the first partnerships between Microsoft and Intel and IBM came together to create the the platforms that ultimately you know created the software industry in the PC era that led to the client server era that led to the internet and so forth and so on. Now, it's not to say that ecosystems don't have value just because I say they're not new. And acknowledge that ecosystems are taking on greater importance, um, particularly in the cloud era because through ecosystems, we're able to accrete more value onto platforms or into applications acting like platforms to create greater value for the customer. Here's the thing though, is that every time you bring two applications together, no matter how well designed they are, no matter how secure they are, just by the act of bringing them together, you're creating a potential vulnerability. You're creating potential holes that can be exploited. And one of the things that is not getting enough conversation is how security or security risks will impact ecosystems. You know, if we are going to, as an industry, if the channel is going to evolve to where we have all of these interdependencies with different vendors, with different products, working together in concert, integrated, you know, integrated deeply to create deeper user user experiences and ultimately delivering greater value. Then we also have to talk about the security of those integrations, the security of those ecosystems, and the security of the partners that are delivering those applications, those those holistic, multi-branded, multi-product applications down to the down to the customer. Uh, Netscope, a, a security vendor that specializes in cloud security applications uh, has just released uh, recently a new service called Cloud Exchange, and it is about security intelligence specifically geared towards monitoring and evaluating and scoring the security readiness or the security hygiene of ecosystem environments or these integrated environments. Uh, and I think that this, this is an important topic that we need to bring more to the forefront in the channel. We need to talk more about how security from the vendor through the partner in the products down to the customers impacts trust and value. This is a conversation of building and maintaining integrity that is the underpinning of value and trust. So joining us here today on Changing Channels is Dave Rogers. He is the Senior Vice President of of Global Alliances and Cloud Sales at Netscope. And he's here to talk with us about Cloud Exchange as well as how security impacts ecosystems. And with that, Dave Rogers, welcome to Changing Channels. Thanks for having me, Larry. Hey, Dave, thanks for being here. Before we get into talking about, about ecosystems and how security relates to it, I want to just take a moment. Being a security vendor, you have a a pretty uh, good handle on what's going on out in the world. And we are entering a, not just a new phase of, of threat landscape because of the evolving threats that are out there, but also uh, poor economic conditions typically breed an uptick in hacker and malicious activity. So what are you seeing at Netscope or what are the, you and the other people at Netscope seeing in terms of the security outlook going forward for the next year? I think our customers are going to be more challenged than they've ever been for having the resources that they need to keep up with the bad guys and all the tools and investments that they've made over the last year. So a lot of COVID investments were made really quickly, and a lot of the tools that that they implemented um, 
are now starting to show some wear and we're starting to see areas where they're looking for their tools to communicate better with each other. And at the same time, they're resource constrained as they've always been. And the bad guys aren't stopping. I think you said it well, Larry, I think they're expecting to see um, more risk, more exposure, and uh, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting year. Yeah. I've, so I, so as many people may know, I started my career in security. So, uh, and I remember going back 20 years ago, talking about security being an arms race is that there, you know, every time you create a new mouse trap, they'll come out with a better mouse. Uh, so, but you said something there that I thought was interesting is that there's a bit of wear going on with the security investments that have been made over the past couple of years. What does that mean? What do you mean by, is it just that they're, they need fine tuning or is there, are they outmoded at this point? Well, I think we created the term defense in depth or the phrase um, a few years ago to articulate why the overlap in tools was a good thing. And at the time as lands, the threat landscapes were evolving, I think that's exactly what the market needed. But what we have not been able to do is to increase the number of security professionals that our end customers need, have available to them uh, to be able to support the tools that are coming into their environment. And so what they're seeing is all of that overlap in those tools without the ability to share um, information is creating gaps with their own resources in those organizations. So having a tool and being able to effectively manage that and support it are two different things. And I think what we're seeing from our customers or the feedback we're hearing is platform is becoming a good word. I think for years, platform was a bad word, but those tools and the gaps that are being created by having so much overlap and not being able to meet them are now creating stress within the customer environment. And they're asking their customers and their partner or their vendors and their partners to help them solve those issues and make them more efficient so that they can do more with less. Yeah. You or Netscope has recently come out with Cloud Exchange, which is about brokering and sharing security intelligence across different applications or giving more visibility. Um, I'm, I'm not doing the description justice. Can you take us through what Cloud Exchange is and what your intent for it is? Yeah, so Netscope Cloud Exchange is a series of integrations that we've had um, for many years across many different tools and vendors. So how can you share data from your endpoint to Netscope? How do we make sure that we are um, providing a consistent format and across all of our tools and how we support our customers, whether we're talking about feeding logs to a SIM, um, and what we've done is we've taken those integrations that we've created over time, and we've created a new offering for customers where they can actually go to our partners and actually have them create those integrations, whether they're going to implement that and support that directly from a partner or actually pull those integrations in, the work that we've already done for them and create an opportunity for their tools to create our, our tool to communicate more effectively with the other investments they've made. So endpoint would be one, um, identity is another uh, great opportunity for customers to take, allow their tools to better communicate. I think the biggest advantage for them is everybody has taken all their logs and pulled them into their SIM and looking for problems and looking for challenges and how to address uh, concerns as they come in, as we're more effectively sharing data in real time, we're actually able to reduce the number of incidents that the uh, customer is going to have to address and remediate. Yeah. Now, I, one of the things we hear about at Channelomics, and we talk a lot about it as well, is this the advent of ecosystems. Uh, and Again, as people have heard me rant about, because ecosystems is not a new word, it's not a new idea, and it's definitely not a new practice. The entire channel was built on the idea of interoperability and segmentation of, of, of products that work together. It's, it's the basic definition of an ecosystem. But 
there is a movement to operationalize ecosystems more so that resellers downstream from companies like Netscope can create holistic systems, you know, with different components or different products they were one plus one plus one equals 10. So it's greater than the sum of its parts. But doesn't that then create the possibility for more security problems downstream? Is that as you, as you interoperate or you, inter, you, you integrate two different systems together, you create the possibility for, for holes or for security problems. Is that something that, that Cloud Exchange addresses, or is that something that Cloud Exchange has a Cloud Exchange has applicability towards helping to solve? Towards helping to solve. Absolutely. Now it's it is specifically um, what our customers asked us to help them with. Um, an integration between two products it works great until you update either one of those two products or the user environment around them. So being able to consistently update that environment and provide those integrations as your environment changes is extremely important. The holes and gaps usually develop from well-meaning people updating one version of code on a different security product or a different technology within their environment. By having the ability to manage those updates for the customer, and for us to be able to push those out and share the data in real time between the tools, we address a lot of those gaps that exist when people were just writing an integration and said, hey, I hope that works for you. That, that created a lot of opportunities for the bad guys to exploit that as the customer environment changed over time. Do you find, though, that as in talking about ecosystem development, particularly with your peers out in the market, because I hear this all the time, is that they want to get that amplification effect. They want to be able to be able to capture opportunities that they may not be aware of. Um, they may be able to drive more interest into their product if they expose their partners to other complementary products, again, that add more value. But do you think that security is enough of a part of that conversation about, the, about that go-to-market equation that that it's being incorporated well enough, or do you think that that is another layer that has to be added into the ecosystem, into the ecosystem idea, or the ecosystem philosophies? There's always room for improvement, so that's the the short, easy answer. Um, but our driving, our motivation, sales is important to us. Uh, it's customers pushing us. Where have we've built this backwards? Our first integrations more than five years ago, before I, I came to Netscope, were customers driven. They're customer ideas, and it's the feedback that we're getting from them um, that is driving what we're pulling together, what we put together. It also drives um, who we're investing time with. Um, it's one thing when a customer asks us for a, a new integration, it, that's great. When 30, 40, 50 customers, Larry, start asking for the same thing, they're the ones that are identifying the need. And those are the ones that we invest in uh, initially. But I think there's a lot of room to improve. And I think that we're asking customers. Um, and I think there's more room for us as a community to create um easier to digest forums for them to say, here's what we really want as a community. And for that to not be Netscope focused or any one vendor focused, but to get that back from them, um, I think could help accelerate um, technologies and developments like what we've built at, at Netscope and maybe new integrations as well. All right. Security intelligence has always seemed, or when people say security intelligence or security information, they, they often talk about having all these sensors out in, out in the wild and they're drawing down either threat indicators is that they're doing scans or they're seeing, they're, they're passively monitoring traffic. But what you're doing with Cloud Exchange is a bit different than that. You're actually tapping into other partners that are scoring the security readiness of, of third parties. Of not just of their operating environments as well as their their applications. How does that work, and why is that different than just parsing log data? One of the most complicated issues for our technology 
consumers, our customers, not just the security teams, is their need to be agile for the business. And that means developing new cloud services, adopting new SaaS services for the business and being able to move quickly. It is very difficult for security and technology to keep up with a pace, regardless of size or industry. And how that's evolved over the last five or six years is changed the way that we think about um, how we support the business. Six years ago, uh, when I was building a cloud security practice with a large security um, reseller integrator, um, there was a large part of the business that was in denial that cloud services were important. And there was a lot of things that were unknown in great companies like BitSight, Security Scorecard, um, developed technologies to help the infrastructure teams understand um, what the risks were. And third-party risk management, we've seen some of the largest breaches in the world often come from third parties. So we, what we've done is we've taken over the years, created a our own internal scoring mechanism plus third-party scoring mechanisms of all of the applications, many of the applications is probably a better choice of words that are available to our customers so that they can assess risk in real time if they want to, or they can go back and look at over time, what are their usage patterns of their customers? What does the business really need? But in the past, we really only gave two options to the business. We're going to be extremely aggressive in limiting what you can do, or the doors are wide open. And I think we are at a spot where we've allowed the business to go a lot faster while significantly reducing risk. And that means not just our own technology and our own scoring for those applications, but it's also pulling in the business side and third parties and being able to pull those pieces together so that we're making real-time decisions and far more informed decisions than we've been able to make in the past. Hmm. So do you believe, is it too hard to say, or is it too difficult to say that layering in some elements of active security intelligence, the security scoring that you're describing, can be a way of maintaining, building and maintaining the integrity, uh, the trustworthiness of extended technology relationships as they get applied to end customer organizations? I, I think it's critical, absolutely critical. When we talk to customers at a recent um, customer advisory board, and we were talking, asking them, what are they, what do they want? What does the business want for them? And how do they balance that? Um, they want to be able to do it in as close to real time as possible. But what they recognize and the feedback that we get, and then you're starting to see incorporated into the products that we're delivering, is they want real time coaching. They want to be able to educate the, the users on what we're doing, why we're doing it. Are you sure you want to do that? Um, and I think we're going to see an acceleration in the way that security is starting to be adopted. I think SASE and bringing the security teams and the network teams much closer together is going to help facilitate that. Sometimes those are two completely different organizations in the past that didn't talk together. And I think that collision as they come together and start building solutions that are much more closely tied to what the end users need and the business needs. You're starting to see security and the coaching layered into that. And there's a lot of opportunity for our customers to improve what they deliver um, as a product to their end users. Hmm. Now, Netscope is, is, as I said, Netscope just announced this new offering of Cloud Exchange, uh, and it is being sold through your partners as a managed service. Uh, so yes. how does that work and how does that how does that align with the other technologies that it's actually monitoring? Because if it's in a, if they're using it to monitor a customer environment, there's a lot of different ways that those technologies are being applied. And if the partner is the one that's reselling those technologies, does it have to have a different, uh, have the same alignment in terms of its sales model, in terms of its support model, or is it just, no, is it an overlay? Um, two different models and uh, two different scenarios. So, 
managed security services is one of the fastest growing segments um, that we see from a partner makeup and things being requested specifically from our customers. For the managed service security service providers, we're typically going to see them bring in the pieces and parts and then incorporate that into the technology stacks that they're already building. Uh, for other customers, they want to use that Netscope as a service, specifically the cloud risk exchange specifically. And they're gonna want that um, delivered for them. And that might be a partner who doesn't provide managed services. It might be one of the largest, most complex financial services companies. And either way that they want to consume that at the customer level is great for us. But from a partner perspective, they will continue to have choice in how they represent Cloud Risk Exchange uh, to their customers. Um, so far, the uh, adoption is significant and there's not really any pushback yet. Dave, let's uh, let's exit our practical question. Uh, I've heard from my entire career that security should be something that is baked into every process, every product at the beginning of its development. And yet it's always somehow treated as a bolt on or an afterthought. Um, and I find this like bringing this into the context of the development of, of ecosystems within channels or as addition to channels is that we're we're purposely pulling together a lot of new partnerships that lead to integrations that have the potential for conflicts and opening up vulnerabilities. So in your opinion, do you think that security and should be a qualifier or a requisite, or at least good security hygiene should be the qualifier or requisite for participation in partner programs, for participation in ecosystems, just being able to maintain that end-to-end -end integrity to maintain trust with the customer? A hundred percent. It's a, uh, everybody should be, should have the third-party risk assessments. Everybody from a vendor perspective, whether you're the OEM or you're the partner, has to be responsible for maintaining their own security posture. And um, I think, we see a lot of that from the, um, let's say the higher end of the market, some of the more enterprise customers and our largest partners. Uh, but I think there's a lot of room to improve in middle market. And I think that's uh, something hopefully we'll see over some time. Uh, I hope so too. I mean, look, security is dynamic. It's always changing. Uh, it's it's truly the one of the things that makes security exciting is that you're always looking at something new. Um, but that means there's always something potentially bad going on. So I, I agree with you is that it needs to be more part. It needs to be a greater part of the partnership conversation. I think the, uh, the telcos uh, are particularly good at that. When I think about our strategic relationships with Orange and KPN, Telefonica, Verizon, um, they're very arduous programs validating our security internal as well as not just our products and our ability to go to market together. Um, and I think there you'll see more of that as we continue to grow. Very good. Dave Rogers, the Senior Vice President of Global Alliances and Channel Sales at Netscope. Thanks for joining us here on Changing Channels. Thanks, Larry. Well, that's about all the time we have for this edition of Changing Channels. Again, I want to thank our guest, Dave Rogers, the Senior Vice President of Global Alliances and Channel Sales at Netscope. And I want to thank all of you for joining us yet again here on Changing Channels, um, where we talk with thought leaders and business leaders about how technology is changing the landscape. Um, we really do see technology change in the world. And here at Channelnomics, the Channelnomics team is monitoring how technology can be delivered better through the channel to the customer to create more value. Listen, if you like what we're doing here, please check like, uh, you know, subscribe to this channel, tell your friends about us. And also please check out the resources we have at Channelnomics and our other podcasts in the margins. Until next time, I'm Larry Walsh. Thank you for joining Changing Channels with Larry Walsh, a production of Channelnomics. If you've enjoyed today's episode, 
hit the like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and share with your friends. For more information about Channelnomics services and insights, follow us on Twitter and YouTube, and check out our website at channelnomics.com. Channelnomics is a registered trademark of and changing channels is copyright by 2112 Enterprises, LLC.